Hello, fourth graders. Today, you're going to be reading about um, chapter six, lesson five, what makes the West a worldwide success. And you're going to be learning about how activities uh, and industries in the West have caused success here in the West, as well as around the world. Um, you're going to learn about how it affects the economy of the United States. And um, you're going to be talking about computers, technology, and trade. You're going to be learning or explaining why the um, entertainment industry became so important to the West. You're going to be predicting what the next advance is probably going to be. Um, then you're going to be describing what makes the West a good place to host the Olympic Games. And later on, uh, you are going to be writing um, to talk about different features of the West. So here we have a photo of the port of Seattle is a major trade hub in the West. A port is a place that allows ships to dock. Um, so it's usually along the water and it allows for things that are here. So like the shipping containers to access boats easily from one side to the other. We're on page 282 right now. We're gonna go to page 283 and 284. So first thing we have to do is inspect Um, looking at the title and reading this, uh, the lesson question, what do you already know about the, about the lesson cover? What the lesson is going to cover? You're going to be circling the West's trading partners and then underlining the busiest ports in the West. Um, down here where it says find evidence, you're going to be locating why the West is a good, in a good position to trade internationally and underlining the products of the Western states export. And then you could write what other regions in the United States have busy ports for international trade. Trade in the West. International trade is an important part of the West economy. All over the world, people buy products that come from Western states, computers and electric, electronic products, transportation equipment, chemicals, machinery, and food are some of the categories of items Western states export. That means to ship out. Um, other products include primary min metals, mined from natural sources, non-metallic minerals, and petroleum and coal products. Mexico and Canada are significant trading partners with the states in the West. Many Western states border these countries. Because many states in the West are on the coast of the Pacific Ocean, it is also easy to trade with companies from the Pacific Basin. These countries include China, Japan, South Korea, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. States along the West have many ports that both receive and send container ships around the world. The busiest ports include Los Angeles, Long Beach, and Oakland in California. Seattle, Tacoma, and Washington handles more than 5% of the U.S.'s stock of the U.S.'s market. Anchorage, Alaska connects frequently with markets in Asia. Expanding trade has helped the port cities grow and become thriving centers of business and culture. So we are going, you are supposed to have already circled the West trading partners. That means the countries that the West trades with. Underline the busiest ports in the West, which you can find down here. And um, you're going to be underlining the products that the West exports. We're going to move on to page 286. And you're gonna be summarizing which is something that you've done before. So we're just gonna be following that same idea. You're going to be reading the text once all the way through. Anytime you have text, you need to read it. Um, then you're gonna be looking for key details that support main ideas. You need to figure out what the main piece of information that they keep talking about again and again is. And then from there, figure out what are the details that they gave you that prove that point, okay? Then you're gonna be asking yourself the question of how can I restate? How can I put it into my own words? What the author wants me to know? Why is it important? And then you're going to restate the important information in your own words. And you're gonna put the summary in the bottom box. So using the information that we read from the text. We're going to look at this detail right here. International trade allows people worldwide to buy products from the West. That is one detail that they've already given us. So all of these details should share um, a common theme talking about 
the main information here, which is international trade. So if you were going to add information like uh, top exports um, and what they are, those were things that you annotated earlier. So things like computers, electronic products, transportation equipment, chemicals, and food are all details that agree with your other detail. If you wanted to add another detail talking about how Mexico, Canada, and other Pacific Basin countries are the West's most important trading partners, that would still support this detail right here, which talks about international trade that allows people to trade with the West and to buy products. Here would be products, here would be countries. And all of these details, so talking about how international trade allows products, uh, allows people to buy products in the West, if you talked about the top exports, if you talked about um, the countries, all of those have the main important, um, some like if you were going to put them all together or put them in one main sentence, you could talk about how the West economy includes trades with other countries, which you got from here. These states trade with Pacific Basin countries, exporting many different kinds of products. So you took, you would have taken information from here, right, international trade. You would have taken information from here, talking about the different things that they export. And you would have taken information from here, talking about your, um, the countries that you trade with, or the, that the West trades with, and then putting them all together, but without being super specific about it. You would be more general. You wouldn't be saying every single detail that you found. It is the same idea that you're going to be doing here. So here you're going to be finding three details and then putting them together to create a summary. And so each of these would be three different summaries with um, three uh, details that support that summary. So if you wanted to start with a summary and then work backwards, that's another option you can do. Um, if you wanted to start with your details and then work forwards, that works too. So we're going to go to your textbook on page 342 uh, and start reading. We're on page 342, lesson five, what makes the West a worldwide success? And we're looking for uh, details to create a summary. Here we have the title as Hooray for Hollywood. For years, the West's available land and sunny, mild weather have attracted people from all over the world. Bases, besides geography, dreams of a new beginning have historically drawn people to the West. Many people have, and still do, follow their dreams of becoming movie stars in the West. In the early 1900s, movies were shot in black and white, and they did not have sound. Film companies made these silent films, mainly in New York and New Jersey. These companies controlled the small filmmaking industry and owned all the filmmaking equipment. Filmmakers didn't always like that, so they decided to go somewhere else to make films. The place they chose was a small suburb of Los Angeles called Hollywood. Southern California was a great place to make movies. Its mild climate allowed the filmmakers to work outside year-round. California also had every kind of landscape that a filmmaker might need. Thousands of people moved to Los Angeles to work in the movie industry. By the 1920s, Hollywood was known as the movie capital of the world. Going to the movies became a popular activity worldwide. So if you were going to use that as an example for your workbook page, that the West has a mild climate so movies can be made all year round, um, that uh, TV and animation were harder to make on the East Coast, or that um, people began moving to the West um, to work in the movie industry, then you could summarize it as the West offers the perfect climate for movies, TV, and animations have become popular. Many people in, are employed to make movies and animation. So using those three paragraphs, you would have um, or at least three paragraphs. You could have made your own uh, details and summary. On page 344, movies in the modern West. Since the early 20th century, the West has been a leader in producing movies. California's entertainment industry is the biggest in the world. In recent years, movie making is increasing in other Western states as well. The moving parts. The movie industry has many parts. 
a producer must raise money to hire a writer to create a script and a director to film the movie. The crew consists of people who gather costumes, style, hair, and makeup, record sound, set up lights, and run cameras. After a movie has been filmed, many other people work on it. Crew members add special visual effects using computers or building models. Some add sound effects like creaking floors and slamming doors. Film editors cut out material that is not needed. Once the movie is finished, it is promoted through advertising and publicity. Movie making provides jobs for many people. Los Angeles is the movie making capital of the world. Movies and television shows based on the United States will earn about, based in the United States, will earn about seven hundred seventy-one billion by two thousand nineteen. Much of that due to movies created in California. Down here we have a photo. With the caption, editors use computers to put together the sound and images for a film. Television and animation. The introduction of television in the mid 20th century meant that people could watch shows at home. Programs in the United States were filmed and produced largely in California to make use of local existing talent and skills. Because of the many areas of TV show production, the television industry provides many jobs. Commercials air during programs to help people to help pay for the low for the cost of the show. Users or of subscription fees pay users of subscription services pay fees to have access to certain channels or shows. In today's digital area era, people can watch shows on computers, tablets, mobile devices, and televisions. Some forms of film and TV can be produced more efficiently through advances in technology. One of these advantages is animation, or the images that are arranged in a certain order to create the effect of movement. Cartoons are a form of animation that is drawn by hand. Computer-generated imagery, CGI, is a way to create animation on a computer, on a computer and has made this process quicker and easier. Here we have an image of a film crew that works with actors in the desert in the West. Tech industry in the West. During World War II, computers were used for military calculations and decoding messages. After the war, other industries <clears throat> found ways to use computers. The nearly, these early machines were huge and expensive. One computer filled a large room. In 1958, the microchip transform the computer industry. A microchip is a tiny computer that computer part that allows a computer to make calculations. It is made from silicon, an element found in the Earth's crust. A microchip could do the job of a room-sized processor. It made it possible to create faster computers that could fit on a desktop. A new kind of computer became popular. Personal computers or PCs began to be mass produced. The more computers that were made, the more affordable they became. PCs started to appear in homes and businesses in the 1980s. Developers worked to improve this technology. As a result, machines became smaller and lighter. By 2015, almost 9 out of 10 homes in the United States had personal computers. Computers and how they are used have continued to evolve. PCs were originally designed to sit on desks. Laptops, and, laptops were developed as lighter, more portable computers. Handheld computers became today's smartphones and tablets. And here we have an image of a microchip. A microchip is so small that an ant can hold one in its mouth. That's a microchip right there. And down here we have the caption for this photo. Many of today's computers are easy to carry around. We've tried to slowly um, decrease their size. In 1994, two college students, Dave Philo and Jerry Yang, created a directory of useful websites on the internet. They called their list Yahoo and it was a search engine. It quickly became popular. Soon the companies offered, soon other companies offered similar search engines and directories. Sergey Brim and Larry Page founded a search engine called Google in 1998. Seattle has become a center for major computer companies. The Santa Clara Valley in Northern California is also a center of computer innovation. So many computer companies opened there that the area became known as Silicon Valley, named for the microchips. Other areas in the West, such as Salt Lake City, have grown technolo have growing technology industries. 
here we have an image with the caption, many computer and technology company headquarters are located in the West. Down here we have a primary source in their words by Sergey Brin and Jerry Yang. I have a vision of making all of the world's information universally accessible and useful. This company isn't really about technology. It's about solving people's basic needs for efficiency, for given effectiveness and simplicity. Jerry Yang, Yahoo's founder. And then here we have Sergey Brin. The Olympics and the West. Ancient, the ancient Olympic Games started dated back to 776 BC. They made a comeback in uh, 1986 AD. In modern times, the summer and winter Olympic Games alternate every two years. Because of the climate and natural features of the region, many Olympic Games have been held across the West. The California Games, Los Angeles built a stadium to, hold, to host the 1932 Summer Olympic Games. Indoor games included boxing, wrestling, and weightlifting. Swimming, diving, water polo, gymnastics, and bison events occurred outdoors. The Summer Games returned to Los Angeles in 1984. A record 140 countries participated in the Games. Almost 7,000 athletes competed in 221 events. Tennis, baseball, and windsurfing were added to the lineup. Los Angeles will host the Games for the third time in 2028. Squaw Valley, located, located high in the Sierra Nevada, hosted the 1960 Winter Games. The event featured downhill skiing, speed racing, speed skating, figure skating, ice hockey, and ski jumping. For the first time ever, television used the instant replay to show portions of events. And here we have a caption of the photo. Gymnast is, gymnastics is one of the most popular events in the Summer Games. And the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum played host to many Summer Olympic events. Salt Lake City. In the 19th Winter Olympic Games were held in Salt Lake City, Utah in February, 2002. About 2,400 athletes completed in, competed in 78 events. Representatives from countries that have warm climates competed in the Winter Olympics for the first time. These include Kenya, India, Cameroon, Brazil, Iran, Fiji, and Thailand. Here we have one of the Olympic Games, the Winter Olympic Games bobsledding. Um, which is an exciting event in the Winter Olympics. Then we have the Paralympic Games. Since 1960, the Paralympic Summer Games have followed the Summer Olympics. The Paralympic Winter Games have been held since 1976. These sporting events involve athletes with impairments. There are more than 20 different summer sports, including archery, wheelchair tennis, and the triathlon. The summer, the winter sports include para ice hockey and cross country skiing. Salt Lake City hosted the Paralympics Winter Games in 2002. And here we have uh, the Olympic and Paralympic athletes winning gold, silver, and bronze medals. So here we have it there. And the Paralympic Summer Games featuring events like wheelchair basketball. Um, and that is the end of unit five or chapter six, unit five, what makes the world, the West a worldwide success. So we're going to go back to your details and fill them in. Um, for details, we read about a lot of different things that the West has. If you were talking about the California games or the, um, the Olympics, then you could talk about how the Olympics are held every four years, and they originated in Greece, but then they started again in 1896. Um, another supporting detail could talk about how uh, Los Angeles and Salt Lake City have already hosted the games, and then how the Paralympic Games were also held uh, every four years. So all of those details are parts of the same portion right here. And the main thing that it's giving, the main information that it's giving, is talking about how the Olympics and the Paralympics are held every four years in the United States. And the West has, um, uh, the West has been one of the main parts or one of the main places that have hosted the modern Olympics since 1896. And you could write that for 
uh, these details in summary. If you wanted to talk about how um, uh, the creation of computers and the advancement of technology, um, those are other details you could add. You could talk about the development of the microchip um, in Silicon Valley. You could talk about how the internet and PCs uh, started to become bigger or how um, uh, famous companies like Google and Yahoo were created in California. And all of those things together would be um, talking about the same thing, which is the internet and computer programming or computer um, computers and their growth in California. Um, so the Olympics, no, for the development of uh, microchips and how all computers now use them as well as on the internet, um, the West has definitely played a large part in that. Seattle, Silicon Valley are huge parts of um, computer history. Now we're going to get started on page 288. Here you're going to talk about or you're going to review um, the information that you have about what makes the West worldwide success. We talked about at least three of them. And then um, you're going to choose the most important uh, thing that you think connects the West and adds it to um, what makes it important in the world. And you would be creating a postcard that shows that connection. Then describe why you think that uh, attribute is so important for the West success. So if you wanted to write a postcard about how um, you think that the West participation in the Olympics is a big reason why it's important. If you wanted to talk about how the West um, plays a huge role in movie history, um, that could definitely be another one. So if you wanted to talk about uh, um, whatever one of the options were, all of those things, if you want to talk about businesses in the West, then you would first draw um, what exactly you're talking about. If you want to talk about movies, you could draw a film roll. Um, you could make it look like it was a movie screen. Um, and then you would need to explain how the West is uh, important for um, the growth of film uh, and how it started and how it connects people today. Because if you think about it, a lot of times, uh, American movies are made in the West and then they go to other countries. For your connect to the essential question, you're going to be analyzing how does the West connections uh, to um, how do the West connections to the world help draw people into the region? So how does the West um, cause people to come there? Uh, what are attractions, modern attractions that would make people want to come to the West? If you wanted to talk about how careers such as working in the computer industry, the film industry, or um, how uh, technology and even sports for um, the Olympics, uh, we already know that it's going to be again 2028, which is only uh, six years from now. All of those connections would help bring in the best of the best from people all over the world. And that is the end of chapter six, lesson five. This is the end of your workbook pages. So make sure that you complete all of them um, using your neatest handwriting and complete sentences.